Hello YouTubers. The following video is not going to be a grammar video. It's just a positive performance vessel that I would like to push out into the sea of space to perhaps give people a message of hope in these trying and chaotic times. And it involves me, nature, and my children out there in my backyard. Enjoy. Welcome to my backyard. What my backyard is, is a golf course that's been abandoned since the year 2015. So it's become quite a natural habitat for all manner of different wildlife. And aside from the yapping of a dog behind me in a neighbor's yard, it's actually a very peaceful place. And uh, one that myself and my family enjoy navigating through in order to meditate and maintain some peace and some sanity, especially in today's world, in today's world of toilet paper hoarders, bread buyers, cleaning product hoarders, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So I'm sharing this video with you as a positive performance note that there is no fear out here in this place. In this place, the birds are singing, the sun is shining, and somewhere out here, my daughter has my infrared binoculars and is looking for deer. Fear is an abstract concept. Fear is something that people feel as a reaction to the threat of something that has not happened. Fear is an abstract, non-tangible modality of thinking that if you're not careful, will modify your behavior and control your behavior. Fear is a very potent weapon that can be used to control people. Take a step into any supermarket right now and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Fear is a non-tangible modality of thinking. Look it up. Just look it up simply on Google and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. It's just an idea. It's not a real thing. It's an abstract concept. It's the threat of something. It's a reaction to the threat of something. I learned a long time ago uh, when I used to participate in mixed martial arts and boxing and jiu-jitsu, wrestling and Muay Thai boxing. I learned to control fear in that I would never let myself, I would never let fear modify me to the point where it affected my reactions. The same could be said for anger. Once you let fear overcome you, now you're being modified. Now you're not acting in your correct mind. You've been modified. I used to think of fear as a hot bucket of water that someone threw on me. Rather than think of being inundated by it, I thought of it as being splashed and it's hot right at first. You feel that first uh, rush, that first burn, but then it drips off and it fades away and it dries. And it's still there. You still have the redness, but it's manageable. That's what fear is. 
And I always play the tape through, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? What is the worst thing that could happen? Well, that means many things to many different people. To some people, death is the worst thing that could happen. To some people, the fear of starvation is the worst thing that could happen. Now, those are fears. Who here, listening to this, watching this, knows what death is? Who's experienced it? I can reasonably assume that none of us have. How about starvation? Some people here may know what it's like to starve. And I'm not talking about missing breakfast in the morning. I'm talking about going days and days and days and days without food. I personally have experienced this. It's not th uh, something I'm afraid of, though. Other things might be, you know, being afraid of your family feeling pain or suffering. There's many different concepts of this. So if you play the tape through and think of what's the worst thing that can happen, I find that for myself, that usually helps to soothe the fear, get it to sit back, take a back seat, stay in its lane, so that I can navigate with a clear head. Even though fear is still a passenger, it's a docile passenger. Of course, you can go on Facebook and start scrolling through <laughs> your Facebook feed and all of a sudden, the docile passenger becomes a ravenous beast trying to suck on your blood. Uh, so, it's always good to keep in mind that uh, those other things that I talk about in my For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, uh, tangible contract modalities of navigation versus non-tangible. I find that when I start reading too much into what we'll call conspiracy theories and assumptions and presumptions, that's when the fear gets poked and wakes up and becomes louder and louder. So I definitely control that and I, uh, you know, I get away from those types of groups and those types of pages that promote that type of thinking. No thank you. All right, well, that's interesting. I did not find my daughter out here, which means she must be inside my house. If I do find her, I will definitely tag on a piece at the end of this video to give closure on that. If you have any questions about quantum grammar, feel free to contact me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your viewership. Please stay safe. And uh, bless you and your families. So just for closure on my daughter out in the golf course looking for deer. I found her and she was with my son. There's my son, colon Jared hyphen Matthew colon Glass. And there's my daughter, colon Jayla hyphen Lee colon Glass. Safe and sound, headed home. Have a great day.